Good morning, my name is Matt Rokes and I'm the manager of Plaza Physical Therapy and I'm here with Dr. Cagle and Good we're going to go through your um, exercises following your total hip replacement. First exercise is what we call a long arc quad. Now the, the exercise we want to do is focus on function. So we want him to kick his leg all the way out. Now when he's doing this you're going to notice a couple things. Number one, he tries to get it all the way straight. The other thing he's going to do is getting that muscle to contract. He's gonna, you're going to feel that squeeze at the top. Now, you may be thinking, why am I doing this? Because I had a hip replacement. The idea is we want to make these muscles stronger so it helps us be safe and be able to do the functional things in our daily life. Go up and down stairs, get up and out of a chair, up and off the toilet. Easy things, but things that you need your quad muscles to you know, fire and be strong with too. So, motion is, a, is also a focus. So, he's trying to pull his leg underneath him while he's, pull, while he's getting into that knee flex position. And you can feel this contracting, getting tight right on the top of that thigh and pulling nice and tight right in there. Okay, next exercise we're going to do, we're actually going to have you lay on your back. Go through these pretty quick. We're going to do a quad set. So the idea is to contract the muscle on the top of the thigh. I like to do the long arc quad first. It tells us both your quad is functioning. Okay? So that allows this, this next exercise to go better. So he's going to sort of contract that muscle. It's getting really tight on the, on the top of the thigh. The other thing is you can tell his knee is getting closer to the table. So it's actually straightening out the knee. Yeah, you can actually feel that where the back of your knee is actually pushing down into your bed or couch or whatever you're laying on. And again, you should be able to feel like I am right now, this muscle right on the top of your leg getting nice and tight. Perfect. Next one is just what we call an ankle pump. Super easy. You're just going to be going up and down with that one. Now, this is going to help with fluid mobilization, keeping the calf nice and loose. We don't want to have some other tightening of these muscles while we're trying to rehab through the hip replacement. Next exercise is what we call our heel slide. So you are actually going to pull that heel towards your butt. Next. So we don't want to go too high, just going through good motion. Focus on pain, we don't want it to really hurt. The idea is to treat it nicely and just focus on good motion. Yeah, for me, for hip replacement surgery, I usually say this angle, the hip angle right now, this is at basically zero, I mean it's fully extended. And for the first six weeks, I like to tell my patient just to keep the muscles from getting too tight and, <clears throat> and stretched out. Don't go pulling your knee to your chest doing yoga. Try to keep this at a 90 degree angle or zero. In that range is usually nice and well tolerated for, for after hip replacement surgery for the first six weeks. All right, now another one we're gonna do when you're laying on, on the bed or on the couch, um, trying to get on the floor is probably not the best option right away. Let's wait until we get farther into physical therapy before we do that. But we're gonna do what's called a clamshell. So Dr. Cagle's actually gonna lay on his side doesn't really matter. You're gonna, and what we usually have people do is do both sides. So we bend the hips and knees. We get into this position here. Couple things to remember. We don't want to roll backwards. If you're rolling backwards, you're not actually getting the muscle back here, which is our focus, to get stronger. We're starting to use the anterior hip. Now, a big focus, and Dr. Cagle talks about this, and we talk about this with you as well, we don't want the muscles in the front of the hip to start to hurt. If we're doing that, it's probably doing something either wrong or too much. Okay, so take your time, really focus on these exercises. It's not necessarily how high you lift it, it's about getting the muscle over here. Okay, so you're gonna keep your feet together. So you can see Dr. Cagle's feet are here, knees are bent, hips are a little bit bent too. He's gonna lift his top knee up and then back down. Now the nice thing about Dr. Cagle, what he's doing is going nice and slow. He's also not rolling backwards, and you can't necessarily see it from your view as, as much, but we don't want to see his back or his hips roll yeah, back like towards us. Don't to open up. That. Just keep your pelvis nice and stable, and just use, you can feel the muscles right here in the, on the side of your hip flexing. That's a great way to use them. And if you don't have the strength to do this right off the bat after having a hip replacement, if you want to simply get in a chair and take gravity out of the way and just work on range of motion for the first few days or week, you can do that as well. So where this is lifting against gravity, if you're sitting in a chair and just basically spreading your legs, that's taking gravity out of it. And that's a way just to get these muscles to fire a little bit if this is too hard early after having your hip replacement. 
<clears throat> Next two exercises we're going to do, um, we're going to do a calf raise. So Dr. Cagle is actually going to stand. I'm going to grab a chair. And you can see this from the side. So it's an easy way to set this up. So calf raises, you know, we want to make sure your weight is equal on both sides. So you're going to actually come up through your, uh, up through your toes. Now all of these exercises, um, when you get your PDF file, it's actually going to tell you how many reps and how many sets to do every day. There's no guesswork. It takes it all and tells you exactly what you should be doing. The next exercise after this is what we call our hamstring curl. So uh, Dr. Cagle is actually going to take his right leg and he's going to bend at the knee, pulling his hip or his uh, heel towards his uh, towards his hip. And you can feel that right in the back of your leg right here. That's what you're trying to work on. Try not to work on extending your hip this way. That's more of kind of your buttock muscles right here. This is trying to focus on your hamstring, where you're just simply bending your knee. Great. And these are the exercises we want you to do following your um, hip replacement. There is one exercise that, you know, Dr. Cagle and, and, and with us, we don't necessarily want you to be doing. It's called a straight leg raise. That would be where you're laying on your back and you're trying to lift that leg straight up. Something that is not necessarily something we want you to be doing right after surgery. And part of the reason why is what we talked about before. We don't want the muscles in the front of the hip to be something that slows you down. Um, we want those to continue to build strength as we go through. No pain with that one. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to show you a straight leg raise as what not to do after having your hip replacement. As he said, the muscles on the front side of your hip can get a little inflamed if you use them too aggressively after having a hip replacement. So a straight leg raise is like this. You're laying flat on your back and just flexing through the hip, using those muscles right through here in the front side of your hip. Again, do not do this, I recommend, for 12 weeks after having your hip replacement because I don't want you to stress the hip flexors as they're called those muscles in the front side of your hip up because that can lead to a severe amount of groin pain right after having your hip replacement so again do not do these for 12 weeks despite if you have another physical therapist you're working with recommending that you do these again do not do straight leg raises for 12 weeks following your hip replacement well, I'd like to say thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I'd also like to thank you for trusting myself and orthopedic specialists with the, your surgical care for your hip replacement. And I hope you have a great experience. Thank you again, and have a great day.